right, hello and welcome back everyone to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be doing an episode of Quick Math. So this is where I explain a topic, a uh, mathematical topic. Uh, this time we're going to be going over the definitions of uh, inverse sine or arc sine and um, what we'd be considering to be secant or one over, or cosecant or one over sine. Uh, so we're basically going to be uh, explaining this really quickly and uh, let's get into the quick maths. Okay, here we go. So the first thing we need to understand is that the sine uh, inverse of theta is not equal to 1 over the sine of theta. This is the very most important thing we need to understand. The uh, 1 over sine of theta is in fact, this is equal to cosecant of theta. This is its own definition, its own function. It's completely, uh, it's completely separate from this inverse sine which, in order to clear up any confusion, is often termed the arc sine. So this is the arc sine function, which is the same as the inverse of the, um, of the sine function. So let's go ahead and erase the board and maybe get a bit more intuition for what this means. So we, we all know that the sine of theta, for example, is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, right? If we're looking at a right triangle right here. Here we go, here's our theta. And then we know this is the hypotenuse, this is the opposite, and this is the adjacent side. If you don't know your trig values, I would say go maybe look up another video or look that up online. They're not too bad. I haven't made a video on the channel yet, so we're just going to keep going with that for now. So what we need to understand is that sine of theta, or sine of whatever, whatever variable is in here, is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. Um, when we're moving this sine to the other side, what we're doing is we're trying to actually calculate the, uh, the arc here. The arc, in this case, we look at this, if we zoom up, on a triangle like this, we see this is our arc. See, this is labeled our theta, but this is an arc, right? If we extend this out, it's still going to be the same, the same degree of an arc. It will be even if we if we get smaller or larger. So what we're trying to do is just find the value of the arc that will result in this final angle. So what we do in this case is we go theta equals, uh, and we move this sign to the other side. We don't just divide each side by a sign. What we need to do is use the inverse function of the sine, which is the sine inverse theta of the opposite over the hypotenuse. And that will give us the result for our arc, assuming that's the variable we need to solve for. Okay, next thing we need to understand is that when we write sine inverse theta, right, we need to understand first and foremost that this exponent up here is not an exponent. It looks like an exponent, it feels like one, but it is not. If we wanted to write this as an exponent, we'd have to do sine of theta, put this in parentheses, and then to the negative one. And then this would be true to say this equals one over the sine of theta. Now this is true. However, as soon as we move this, um, this negative one to the inside, of our sine function, this is denoting something entirely different. So it's, you have to be very, very careful about where this is placed. Is it, is it outside, and other parentheses, or is it on the inside and denoting, uh, denoting the inverse function? I personally would recommend writing this as equal to the arc sine. And you'll see that it, it just clears up more confusion and it also helps us understand what this is actually used for. So like I said in the previous example, we're calculating the arc with this. So we use the arc sign to calculate the arc. Therefore, this notation in my mind makes the most sense and it avoids this confusion for, for a lot of students. So I would recommend going with the arc sign approach. So I'll put this as a, a little note up at the top is that the sine inverse of theta is equal to the arc sine of theta. Now, we'll do a little underline over there. Now we need to cover one more thing. We need to understand that one over sine, if it's not the inverse of the sine, um, then what is this? What, what is this exactly? So this is what we could say is equal to cosecant. We can write it as CSC theta. Cosecant is its own function. It, it is defined as one over the sine of theta. So this is this is its, its own function. Uh, you know we have the we have the other functions like one over uh, cosine theta. A little bit messy. Sorry about that. 
is going to be equal to the secant, S-E-C, of theta. And these are just the defined as their as their own function. This um, you know, we just need to understand the, the different terminology we're working with. So if you want to refer to one over sine, just write it simply as one over sine, or refer to it as a cosecant. If we want to talk about the inverse of sine, we need to talk about the arc sine. And one final little thing I want to I want to cover um, is the definition or the idea of an inverse function. So given the function y equals 2x plus 3, for example, right? If we want to find the inverse of this function, the inverse of the function, remember, the inverse of the function gives us the, um, it gives us the original input to the first function uh, given the output from the first function. And I'll explain what that means with an example. Okay, so here's, here's our first function. This is equal to f of x. This is going to be uh, f to the negative 1 x. That will give us the inverse. What we do is we flip the variables and then solve for y again. Okay, so this is going to be equal to x plus 2y plus 3. Solving for y, you'll see we're going to get x minus 3 divided by 2 divided by 2 equals y. And this will be our inverse function. Now we can test this. So what does this actually mean? Okay, so if we plug in 2 for x into this original equation, so we're putting in 2, I'll write input equals 2, and I'll switch to a blue so we can see things a bit better. Uh, so if we put in an input of 2, we'll get 2 times 2 is 4, plus 3 will equal 7. So that will give us a 7. So I'll say output output equals 7. Now you'll notice that we take the 7, drop it down into our inverse equation. What are we going to get? 7 minus 3. What's that? That's 4 divided by 2 is 2. So this one we put in. So I'll write input equals 7. And then we have the output equals 2. So you'll see that these functions do the opposite thing. Whatever you put into this function, you get out this answer. And if you put in the answer to what you put into the original function, you'll get back what must have gone in to the original equation. So that is what an inverse function does. And you'll note that this, if you put just 1 over sine, that will not do the same as the inverse function.